Age of freaking Ultron, man. Holy goddamn crap. Wow, welcome to Rich Code's Reasonable Reviews, a.k.a. Reasonable Ravings this time, because the Avengers Age Voltron is amazing. Uh, I just got out of a preview last night that I saw, because that's one of the perks of working for a movie theater. And, my God, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, I'm going to start off, though, by talking about what I've heard from other reviewers, where other reviewers that have seen the movie ahead of its release have said that it might not be as great as the original Avengers. That it's good, but it's not game-changing. Fuck them, they're wrong. This, the thing is, they have a fundamental misunderstanding of what Avengers Age of Ultron is and is trying to be. The bottom line is that the Avengers is something that can never be recreated. It's just impossible to recreate in terms of superhero movies because... It is in the same vein as, mo as movies such as Jurassic Park, Toy Story, uh, perhaps Independence Day, you know, uh, The Wizard of Oz, and you can imagine why all the movies that I named, uh, The Matrix, all these movies are tent poles of cinemas. The first time that something major was done, you know, Jurassic Park, the first major usage of CGI, Toy Story. The first fully CG movie was a massive success as well. You had The Wizard of Oz, which was the first time color was used in a movie. You had The Matrix, the first time that slow motion and bullet time was a thing. You know, all these tentpole movies, and The Avengers was the tentpole movie for continuity team-ups. For basically movies that take place all in the same universe coming together. That is never going to be recreated. Just the same way as trying to, as The Return to Oz was nowhere near as good, as The Matrix Reloaded was nowhere near as good. I mean, great, great movies. Great movies. I still personally love The Matrix Reloaded, but it doesn't have the same transcendent value that the original Matrix had. How could it? You can't compare them on equal footing. That said, Age of Ultron is a perfect sequel to The Avengers. Everything about this movie was bigger, better, better, you know, funnier, more epic. Just everything was better. There were more heroes. There was more. It was just more. It was exact. It was two plus hours of more. It was everything that I wanted. And what's more than that, it was a couple things that I wanted, but I was not expecting. I personally think that this movie is going to be one of Max Landis' favorite superhero movies. Because if you watch Max Landis and you hear him rant about Man of Steel, you hear him say about what is a hero was some of the uh, things that, you know, and belated media and movie Bob all have talked about this, about how movies like The Amazing Spider-Man and Man of Steel were all about what is a hero. Well, a hero is a symbol. No. No, 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 no. This movie, Age of Ultron, got what is a hero correct. In that a hero is someone who saves lives. He is someone who defends. He is somebody who sacrifices himself to save others. This movie, and I might be getting into spoilers at the end, but I will give you a warning when I do. This movie defines what a hero is perfectly. It starts off with the movie being about the chase to get Loki's scepter. And if you've been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's been leading up to this, and it's and I love the tie-in. I'm a fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you have if you dropped off watching it at some point, get back into it because it's freaking awesome. But Loki's scepter is recovered. And once it's recovered, basically the origins of Ultron begin. Now, a lot of people, from what I've heard in re early reviews, have, have said... That Ultron is not a good villain. Once again, fuck them, they're wrong. Ultron is a great villain. No, he's not Loki. He is absolutely not Loki. And the thing is, he never could be Loki. And to make him Loki was not the right thing. So, which is why I'm entirely glad that they didn't. Because the thing about Loki versus Ultron that you have to remember is that Loki was set up in Thor. 
he had his own whole movie to set up his motivations as a villain. Where we understand why Loki is troubled and dealing with all this pain and trauma and stuff. He is this guy who basically learns that he was adopted, is a monster on the inside, has the older brother that is destined to be king, as where he was promised the throne and he was, you know, denied it because of who he is and what, it, or at least that's what he thinks, etc., 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 etc. We understand all of this going into the Avengers. And from the very first scene where we see Loki arrive and we see him smile, we know, oh shit, he's about to take revenge. We know that. So Loki has a head start. And from there, in the Avengers, Loki is basically just having fun. We can have fun with Loki as a character because we do not need to worry about setting him up. We do not need to worry about seeing him progress, about seeing him, you know, do anything really. Because he's already there, he's already understood, we already know him. Ultron, on the other hand, is born in this movie. And, and about a quarter of the way through, actually, is when Ultron is born. And thus, he has to be handled differently. And the way they did handle him is absolutely beautiful. Ultron, as a character, is a great character. And now I'm going to start explaining Ultron a little bit for you. But what it is about Ultron is that he is essentially a teenager. He is a rebellious teenager. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but he has all the tropes of it. He wants to cleanse the world. He wants to destroy the old order in with the new order. He wants to basically restart from scratch, rebuild from scratch. This is, and, you know, all under the guise of, you know, what is a little bit of a cliche, but it's handled very differently and very nicely, of the AI not understanding the value of life, the artificial intelligence that is Skynet, you know, or is... Uh, even more so an I robot, Vicky, going, the three laws are all that guide me. To protect humanity, we must sacrifice some humans. You know? Except that Ultron goes, I'm going to destroy all humans because humans are corrupt and miserable and painful and their own agendas and everything is causing chaos and disorder. And in order to create order, we have to destroy humanity and I will be the new version of humanity. Humanity has evolved through me. That's a good motivation. I don't care what you say, it, whether it's, you know, vanilla, whether it's cliche, whether it's a trope, it's still a great motivation. And it's done very, very nicely. From the very first moments of Ultron's life, which we see in the movie, where before he gets his body, he is basically, you know, talking to Jarvis, just, and Jarvis is trying to talk him down, but he's too busy gathering information, assimilating the internet, researching, and like an AI misunderstanding it, misinterpreting what it means, what all of this information is leading to. You know, and he comes up with the entirely wrong conclusion. And it's great. It's beautiful. He's a villain that we can totally understand. It's a villain that we can sort of, that we, you know, sympathize with is not a word that applies. He is a villain that we simply understand, but we understand that he must be stopped at all costs. But that's not what makes him a good villain, at least not the whole part of it. What makes him a great villain as well is the fact that he is an artificial intelligence. He is nearly impossible to defeat. Basically, the later half of the movie, we see that and understand that he is... <laughs> he is basically all of the robots simultaneously. He is leaked into the internet and is essentially everywhere. He is Skynet. He is basically, you know, undefeatable so long as there's a single Ultron robot left. He is inhabiting it. And thus, he is kind of impossible to beat in that way. But this is what makes the ending of it very great and where the true strength of the movie is. I judge movies, and in fact all sorts of art and performance, I judge it on the most face-level value by whether it makes me cry or not. And Age of Ultron made me cry at four separate points in the, in the finale of the movie. It was, oh God, it was so perfect. I don't want to give away spoilers just yet, but like, the, oh man, where to begin about the finale of this movie? The, a lot of reviewers have said that the intro is the strength of this movie. I tend to disagree. The intro was great and wonderful. And 
absolutely perfect. But the strength of the movie really lied in the end. At least for me. Because this is where the fact of heroes defending came in. Let me go back a bit. Before I talk more about this in specifics, because I will get into spoilers in that. This movie is a freaking prize fight. This is, you know, this is a roller coaster, not in terms of the ups and downs that it sends you on, but in the fact that it is one thing after another, after another, after another. You are constantly being punched in the face in this movie, and each punch is a punch of awesome or a punch of funny. And it's just so perfect. All the heroes in this movie act like real people. They're real people. And that's the strength of this movie as an overall arcing whole. Every single hero in this movie has their flaws. And they're expressed in this movie. The team is torn apart because of their flaws throughout this movie. But they have to come together in the end. And they do. And I'm not going to give away exactly the plot details that lead to this. But, you know... Basically, what is set up, one of the greatest arcs in this movie is about Tony Stark, about Iron Man. And how what happened in Iron Man 3 has changed him as a character. He is this paranoid person now who is absolutely, you know, committed and desperate to help save the world at all costs. This is why he creates Ultron in the first place. It is because we came so close to losing in the Avengers. We came so close to losing and dying that this can't happen again. We're not strong enough. We have to change the game, and that's why he creates Ultron. Um, and you can see why he thinks this as a character. Because of an Iron Man 3, his, you know, his basically... <laughs> Uh, what's the, what was the word for it? Oh yeah, post-traumatic stress disorder. This idea that, oh God, the world is not safe at all. I need to focus every fiber of my being to making it safe at any cost. And it informs him, and it's perfect. But, back to the, back to the overarching thing of the movie, in that everybody is a human. And not just because they're all flawed, but because of the way they interact with each other. You can tell... This is about as close as I think a superhero movie and a buddy cop movie come to intertwining that I've ever seen. It's perfect. The very, during the very opening of the movie, the very first uh, fight sequence, they're chatting, they're talking amongst each other as they're going through a battle, and Captain Amer and uh, Iron Man says "damn" at some point. I think it was or "damn it" or some some minor swear word, and Captain America rep responds with "language." And and then it becomes a trope throughout the movie of them back and forth. Every superhero, every of the heroes, taking a turn to to jab Captain America about the about the language thing. Like you're worried about what words we're using, and we're sitting here killing people. What are you? We're taking down Hydra agents. What are you? Really? You know? And everybody does this. Everybody makes a little poke at him throughout the movie. It's perfect. Another sequence, and this is not that much of a spoiler because it was in the trailer, when Hulk is fighting with Iron Man in the Hulkbuster armor. There is a point at which uh, Iron Man gets the upper hand and is repeatedly punching Hulk in the face. Like, one after another, after another, after another. Just straight jabs right into the face. And Hulk finally, you know, catches his fist, stops him, and just spits out a tooth, and then just gives Tony the death glare. And Iron Man and Tony Stark's only response is to go, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's perfect! It, and, and you can imagine Robert Downey Jr.'s delivery of that line, too. I can't deliver it anywhere near as well, but the way he delivered it is just absolutely perfect. And it had me on the floor. I, I swear, this movie, it was so hard not to laugh at and disrupt for all the other employees. It was so hard not to disrupt this movie with laughter. Or just moments of, yes! Because now I'm going to get into spoilers. The final battle. So, if you haven't seen the movie yet, you know, I'm not going to get too spoiler heavy here. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, and you generally don't care if you're spoiled, I'm not going to give away exact details. If you do want to go in completely clean and clear, uh, jump ahead to the last minute of, the, of this video or just turn it off. But basically, this movie is wonderful. You should see it. Thank you very much, goodbye, and hello, spoiler people. 
The ending of this movie is when Ultron has his plan, his diabolical plan, in effect, and what it takes is basically a machine. He's using a machine to, you know, I'm not going to spoil exactly what's going on, but he use, he's using a machine as an end to his, you know, to his grandmaster plan. And he has to get to his machine again in order to put the final nail in the coffin and, you know, drive his diabolical plan home. And so the Avengers have to stop him from getting to that machine. And they circle around it as an army of Ultron robots swarms them. And they are sitting there preventing him from doing harm. It's perfect in a metaphor as to what a hero is, in that it's, you know, defending, 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 defending. You are not proactively trying to do things, you are defending. I love that. I love that so much. Because if you, as you remember, you know, the idea that you saw Max Landis's video, he says that at all of the ends of these superhero movies, all I'm seeing are fire and death, and that confuses the shit out of me. This movie's ending... Aside from that one point of them defending the outpost, essentially. Oh, which, by the way, had one of the most epic shots I've ever seen in a movie. Even rivaling the tracking shot from the original Avengers. Of, you know, basically the camera simply circling around this lineup of heroes that were all dotted around the machine. Defending it from Ultron robots from all sides. The camera spinning around to give you a view of each one. Oh, I could watch it forever. I could just watch it forever. I was so sad when it cut away. I was just like, yes, keep going. Keep spinning around. I want to see it. I want to see it forever. <laughs> but the whole idea of the movie is that, of the ending of the movie, is that Ultron has an entire city essentially trapped and hostage and is going to kill them, you know, as a means to also kill the rest of the Earth. He's going to kill all, everybody. Everybody on this city is going to be collateral damage. And the Avengers go into stopping Ultron with this blatant directive that they said outright in the movie. We have to stop him, and if one person dies, if one innocent person dies, we have failed. We cannot allow a single person to die. And it goes so far, you know, and, and they make, and they follow through. They follow through. Exactly. That, that right there, that, that little sentence right there, if a single person dies, we have failed, informs the entire fight, every single second of the fight, every action that, that comes in, every single person that comes in to join in and aid the Avengers. And you know that Nick Fury shows up, but I'm not going to give spoilers because... God, the, the drops that happen during the final fight are just mind-boggling. Everybody comes in to help. Everybody. Oh my God, it's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, every, new, every new hero that came in to join and help the Avengers, I was like, Yes! Yes! I, I, and, I, and I saw it coming like a second before they show up. I'm like, Oh yes! Yes! They did! I am like the ultimate fanboy for the final finale of this movie. But the entire idea of they're evacuating this city and in and there's the one part that I would change now. Uh, there there's really only two things that I've come up with that I would change this movie. Um, and just to sidetrack a little bit, there are a few movies. There are only like two or three movies I can ever think of that are absolutely perfect that I wouldn't change a thing to. Um <laughs> One of them, you're going to think of me as crazy for thinking it, but it's Batman Forever. I wouldn't change a single frame of it. I love it perfectly as is. Uh, but another movie is my favorite movie of all time, Stranger Than Fiction. It was so perfectly and artistically laid together that I wouldn't change a frame. Uh, this movie, I would change... The first thing that I would change would be the fact that Quicksilver dies. Sorry, I said it. Spoilers. Quicksilver sacrifices himself in order to save another hero who is saving another innocent. I wish it didn't happen. I wish, I wish, I wish that Quicksilver would have gotten to live. Because another thing is, a lot of people have been saying, oh, the Quicksilver can't possibly be done as the X-Men as the X version of Quicksilver from 
X-Men Days of Future Past. Honestly, I think it was done just as well. Granted, he's not the... <laughs> He's not the kind of snarky asshole that, you know, Quicksilver of Days of Future Past was, but his power works very, very well. They use it effectively, and he's got a good character to him. He's got a decent character. Granted, nowhere near a standout as Days of Future Past, but, hey, you can't, ha you can't win uh, all fronts. But, yeah, I wish he didn't have to die. I just, uh, yeah. The heroes sacrificing themselves, I'm... That's always been a thing that's been yay or nay for me, and I very rarely went on the yay on that. Um, it's like the one the one time that I can think of when that was a great thing was Doc Ock sacrificing himself at the end of Spider-Man 2. That was great. That was awesome. But the other thing about this movie that I would change is, like I said earlier on, this movie is a constant punching you in the face of awesomeness and funniness. It, it, I mean, it was granted. There is a section in the middle where there is a rest period. There is breathing space in the movie. Don't take it to mean that there is no breathing space because there is a straight 20 minutes of nothing but breathing space in the minute in, in the middle of the movie to calm down, recuperate, rest up before the finale. And it works. It's it's very important that it was there. But for the finale, for the beginning, you know, it it is kind of I would add a little bit more breathing space into the actual fights themselves. Because it was, it's a little bit, ah, so much, so much, so much. Okay. I have one more point that I want to get to, and it's probably my favorite part of the movie. The Vision. Oh my god, The Vision. The Vision as the polar opposite, the foil to Ultron. What Ultron was supposed to be, which is, you know, a beautiful metaphor for his name, by the way. The Vision is, you know, the metaphor, it's... The vision of what Ultron was supposed to be. This is him. And it's... The way that he comes in... Into life... Is... Oh, it's the best part of the movie. Absolutely the best part of the movie. Uh, because it's a culmination of everything. It is the culmination of... Tony Stark being right. Tony Stark being wrong. Nobody else trusting Tony Stark... And yet, you know, it, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it at all. But it is, oh, it is so gray and murky what happens to make the vision happen. But it is also so clear and so black and white at the same time. It is absolutely perfect. I wish it, it's the only other thing that I would change about this movie, and yet not change at the same time was. The clarity of the decisions and the, you know, and everything that comes into making the vision happen. Ugh. It's so tough. And this is, and this is great. It makes you think. What happened to get the vision to be alive? And once the vision comes to life, he's handled perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. I wouldn't change a single thing about it. From his first few minutes of life where the Avengers don't know if they should trust him or not, but then eventually make the leap of faith and do, and he becomes the best of the Avengers. It's... Oh, I love it. I love it so much. I just love it. Uh, yeah. It, it, there is so much... I mean, there is so much rich detail, and I've only just seen the movie, so I haven't been able to ruminate it, at, uh, to think about it too much yet, about the Vision's origins and what it means, and... You know, all of the depth and complexity that comes from the backstory of the vision of how he was created. What made him. Because a part of him was made by Ultron. A part of him was made by Tony Stark when he was at his wit's end. A part of him was made by Thor, even. Uh, and it's... Oh, it's... All the meanings of that. All of that coming together to form what is essentially the white light of hope in this movie is god i love it so much i just i just love it i love it i love it i love it i'll i'm i'm going to i'm going to have to you know think about this character and you know mentally process him some more but i hope he shows up a lot more often the vision does because he is you know the best of the avengers and he's just so perfect oh i love it so much um one of the big things that was hammered into this movie that i and there's so much that's going on in this movie. I'm not going to give away everything because honestly, I can't. I don't have enough time to. 
But this movie, one of the other things that's really hammered in is Hulk and Black Widow and their romance. Their, you know, their sort of kinship turning to love, turning to, you know, we can't be together. Yes, we can be together. I have demons too. This is blah, blah, blah. It takes a whole journey throughout the whole movie. And it was, and it so could have easily been mishandled. It so very could have easily been mismade and you know, just fallen right apart and destroyed the movie, but it didn't. Because every single time, every single time after every event, we see how that event has changed their relationship. We see where their heads are after every single encounter, after after the Scarlet Witch fucks with all the heroes' minds, after Ultron defeats them all for the first time, after, you know, the Hulk goes crazy and becomes uh, essentially hated by the world for a short amount of time after fighting with Tony Stark. Every single one of these major events that happens to the Hulk and to the heroes, it changes their thought processes, and it and we see it reflected in how he and Black Widow talk to each other, and how they act with each other, and the decisions that they make to go forwards. And it's so very well handled. It's a beautiful journey. It's It's great. I'm not, a, I'm not usually a fan of that sort of stuff, but it works so well in this movie. <sighs> I'm so tempted to keep going, because I could fanboy about this video for ages, but the, 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 the Avengers Age of Ultron. So many people have said that this cannot possibly live up to the Avengers. The early reviewers have said that this is not as good, that Ultron is a boring villain. They're all wrong. This movie... I said it as I was walking out. This might be one of my new all-time favorite superhero movies. It's at least as good as The Avengers 1. If not better. I don't even know where to rank it right now if I were to, to try and rank it. Is it better than Guardians of the Galaxy? I have no idea. It's at least on equal footing. Is it as good or better than Captain America the Winter Soldier? It's at least on equal footing. Is it as good as The Avengers? Yes. Is it better than The Avengers? I'm not sure yet, but it's damn close to saying yes. <laughs> Go see Age of Ultron, because this movie is going to break records, and it deserves to. I'm Rich Coa. Thanks for watching.